sounding lovely, 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 I know and No, and then I say no, I know and wait till they I bop, I bop, and I bop, I will, I will, I will, I will, I wait in vain for you love. I will, I will, I will, I will, I wait in vain. Pull it, this up, pull it, this up. I will, I will, I will, I will, I wait in vain for you love. I will, I will, I will, I will, I wait. Hey, man, man, hold it. Go and play. Go and play. Now I want to teach you something. The university's chant. I don't know if it's official or not, but since I come to you, I eat them my yours. And I say, UV, UV, UV. And I, UV, UV, UV. All right. So here we go. We're not going to ever teach them. We're not going to teach them. This is our chant calls. So we're not going to catch it on the fella. All right. And I may say, UV, UV, UV. And I may say, UV, UV, UV. And I may say, UV. And I, 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 We can't go to Silver Round of Applause now. We're done. We're done. We're done. Good. No. Say, bomb, bomb. Say, bomb, bomb. No, I'm never asking if I say, what a bomb, bomb. Say, bomb, bomb. Just say, bomb, bomb. Now say bum bum. No say it like me. Say bum bum ba bum ba bum. Oh na 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 na. Oh na 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 na. Say oh na 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 na. Oh na 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 na. That's why I'm like you, you know. Say, ah, 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 right, that's all. <laughs> Said, I want you to know that. I'm following out and going here. Saying this and the same. What come next? What come next? Hold on, hold on, stop. Level, level. Keep it. One drop it, one drop it, one drop it. All right. If you don't know it, you know, you don't have a free for singing. You know, come here. Some people are singing like them free. Are you with me, you know? We're afraid of people like you, you know. So come again. Soon you will find out the man. Now that's you better. Sing the chorus now, what me say, ah. Trouble no one, and if you trouble this man, it don't bring up. 
Angela just a am too. Run gone with time big and also boom. So them a beach and them a them know it. Them know it. Them know it. Teachers, but has there ever been a teacher who looked by and say, Yo, you're not come out to nothing? All right, you have a song for them now. Watch me now. Then they want you, yeah. You go and come back with the family. Of everybody speechless like Michael Jackson. Let me know this. Let me young enough to know that one. I can't believe this. Me, I don't know this. I don't know this. Get the next one out. Big money popping everywhere we go. And a big money popping everywhere we go. And a big money. Shh, 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 We have a sense of the song there. So it's the fresh of them there. It's the fresh of them there. And big money popping everywhere we go. And a big money popping everywhere we go. And a big money popping everywhere we go. Continue. Ladies and gentlemen, come to the record. Oh, na, 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 na. Oh, na, 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 na. And oh, na, 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 na. Help me finish it now, and I say, and I say, ah. Gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause. You're a wonderful audience. Just before I leave, my name is D Burns. You can follow me on Instagram at D Burns Music, D B U R N C M U S I C. Thank you.
Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, Sir Hilary Beckles, Principal of the Mona Campus, Professor Archibald MacDonald, our University Registrar, Deputy Principal, Professor Ishin Kumbakawa, the Honorable Favor Williams, Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, deans, faculty, staff, and other members of the platform party, former members of the executive management of the UWI, members of staff of both the Mona campus and the regional headquarters and the open campus, members of the diplomatic corps, retirees, specially invited guests, or new students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome you to the UWI Mona campus and to our 2016 matriculation ceremony. We must extend special welcome to Professor Colin Giles, President of the University of Technology, to the students of the Mona Western Jamaica campus who are participating in the ceremony both here and by live stream to the campus in Montego Bay. We also welcome the acting director of the Mona Western Jamaica campus, Mr. Patrick Prendergast, who is here with us. We extend a very warm welcome to him. We must also acknowledge and welcome our new guild president, Ms. Michaela Gonzalez. Could you stand please, Michaela? And she has with her, her able team of guild counselors. Let us hear it for our new guild council. Today we also have with us members of the Uimona Sports Scholarship Grant. I'm not sure if they're here yet. The Uimona Scholars, the Sports Scholarships, are they here? If not, we can still give them a round of applause. Some are in the tent outside, some are on the, the, the patio next to the assembly hall. I want to extend special welcome to our students who are hardly here. These are our students in our franchise programs. Knox College, are you here? Let us hear the Knox College. Students from Excelsior Community College, are you here? New Excelsior Community College, Brownstown Community College. Oh yes. Of course, we also recognize you as well as your lecturers who have come with us and hope that your time with us will be enjoyable. We want to recognize all our regional and international students. Do we have any of those here? Can we hear your voice? Regional students and international students. Welcome to the Mona campus. There is another group of students and teachers here today that we will welcome specially later on in this program and at that time the reasons will be obvious. Many of you may be wondering the significance of this ceremony. It is indeed a very important one in the academic calendar for the University of the West Indies because it is at this ceremony that our new students are formally enrolled into the University of the West Indies by our Vice Chancellor. The ceremony is held on each campus at the start of the academic life of the students. For those of you who might be here from the schools who are going to be proceeding into sixth form, we look forward to your being part of the UWI new students in another year to come. On behalf of the entire management team of the Mona campus, I can confidently state that we are here to ensure that your experience with us will not only heighten your intellectual prowess, but will also provide you with the necessary skills and competences that you need to function effectively in the world today. And maybe I should add that even outside of that, your guild president keeps us quite busy. So we have no choice but to make sure your experience is a good one. We are very confident of the quality and the dedication of our faculty members and of the commitment of our deans. In that respect, I'd like to just introduce you briefly to the deans of our faculties who are here today. And I will start on my extreme left with the Dean of the Faculty of Law, Dr. Leighton Jackson. <laughs> Beside Dr. Jackson is the Dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, Professor Horace Fletcher. Next to Professor Fletcher is the Dean of the largest faculty, the Faculty of Social Sciences, <laughs> Professor Ian Boxill. And next to Professor Boxill is the Dean of the Faculty of Science and Technology, Professor Paul Rees. 
And of course, last, but by no means least, the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Education, Professor Waibinte Wariboko. Our deans, along with our senior management team, work hard at ensuring that you have a memorable and positive experience. And while I'm in the introduction phase, let me introduce you to other members of the platform. Seated just beside Professor Wariboko is the man at the helm, our Vice Chancellor, Sir Hilary Beckles. Beside Professor Beckles is our own principal and pro-vice chancellor, Professor Archibald MacDonald. And next to him is our deputy principal, Professor Ishin Kumba Kawa. Our university registrar helps to keep us all on our toes, Mr. Will Eiton. I could ask you to guess whose seat is the empty one. You've got it. I think you should matriculate to the University of the West Indies. Beside, beside me, in that empty seat, is our campus librarian, Dr. Paulette Carr. And Dr. Carr is going to be very important in helping us to ensure that the resources you need are available in the library. Beside Dr. Carr is the president of the UWI Alumni Association Jamaica chapter, Ms. Cecile Clayton. And beside Ms. Clayton is our Director of the Office of Student Services and Development, Mr. Jason McKenzie. And as I introduce Mr. McKenzie, I would say that the Office of Student Services and Development will offer you a vast array of choices of extra and co-curricular activities aimed at ensuring that you become a well-rounded individual able to make your mark locally, regionally, and internationally. For those of you who excel in sports, I know that you'll find our sports program to be one of the best, if not the best, amongst all tertiary institutions locally. We have excelled in male and female football, in netball, and in track and field, just to name a few. A total of five past and present U.S. students competed in the recently completed Rio 2016 Olympic Games. These included four current students from Jamaica and one 2015 alumnus from Trinidad and, and Tobago. In the words of our own Vice Chancellor, no other civilization has produced as many sportsmen and sportswomen per capita as the Caribbean. And it gives us great pride at UWI to contribute to this legacy. For those of you starting off your journey with us, we trust that this will be the beginning of years of positive experiences at Mona in Kingston and at the Western Jamaica campus in Montego Bay. For those of you pursuing our programs at other colleges, we expect that your experience will be no less rewarding. I encourage you to make the most of your time with us. Reach high, think world class, work hard, Play well. And at the end of your time, if you have done your part and we have lived up to our commitment to serve you, then I'm confident that you will be able to say it was good to have been here. We hope you will always remember this ceremony with a sense of accomplishment, knowing that your years of hard work at high school has resulted in today, your enrollment in the most prestigious university in the Caribbean. Welcome to the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure now to call upon our guild president, Ms. Michaela Gonzalez, to bring you greetings. Vice Chancellor Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the UE Mona Campus, Professor Archibald MacDonald, University Registrar Mr. Aiton, Deputy Principal of the UE Mona Campus, Professor Ishan Kumbakao, Campus Registrar Dr. Camille Bell Hutchinson, Director of Student Services Mr. Jason McKenzie, other members of the platform, academic staff, guild counselors, other distinguished guests, new students, good afternoon. 
have interacted with many of you throughout the orientation period. However, it is with great honor that I officially welcome you to the University of the West Indies Mona campus. I'm sure you have already been told this is your place to shine. It is a fresh start and many other encouraging words. Thus, on behalf of the Guild Council, I take this time to reiterate such sentiments. You have begun a new chapter in life and what the story entails depends solely on you. So, will you get the grades you desire? desire? Will you join clubs and societies which will aid in your personal development? Will you contribute to the lives of students by one day joining the Guild Council? I recently saw a quote that said, it is not so much about the plan, but more so about the planning. It is not so much about the plan, but even more so the planning. Dreams are necessary, and I will say it's the one thing you won't pay for while being here at UWE. However, dreams with a plan become goals they all gave me a look, right? <laughs> However, dreams with a plan become goals, and goals with action become reality. Matriculating to the best university in the Caribbean is indeed an accomplishment worthy of such a ceremony put on here today. You are now officially a part of a family that will provide for you with endless opportunities. So, do not be afraid to seize the moment and leave your legacy. You deserve to be here. You deserve to be remembered. Be the best that you can be, and always remember that your Guild Council is here for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. It's my pleasure now to introduce to you uh, the principal of the Mona campus, Professor Archibald MacDonald. Archibald MacDonald is a professor of surgery and emergency medicine and a graduate of the University of the West Indies, Mona, where he pursued both the MBBS and the DM surgery programs. He is known as the U.S. surgeon who started emergency physician training in Jamaica, and in so doing, established emergency medicine as an independent academic career for local medical practitioners. Due to his outstanding academic work, he was appointed professor of surgery and, medic and emergency medicine in 2003. His keen sense of the tremendous burden of injuries on hospital services led Professor McDonald to play an important role in the establishment of the Scotiabank Accident and Emergency Unit in 1993 at the University Hospital of the West Indies. Professor McDonald served as head of the Department of Surgery, Radiology, Anesthesia, and Intensive Care from 2002 to 2005, during which time he was instrumental in introducing postgraduate ophthalmology training at the University Hospital of the West Indies. He was appointed Dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences in 2005. At that time, he was faced with a physical plant in desperate need of modernization and an increased national demand for medical doctors. Through his initiative, the number of students entering the Faculty of Medical Sciences to be trained as doctors rapidly increased. Under his leadership, the new Faculty of Medical Sciences Teaching and Learning Complex commenced construction in 2010 and was completed in 2012. That building now stands easily as one which boasts the most modern training facility for medical doctors anywhere in the world. Professor McDonald's service to the medical community extends beyond the academic. He has served as Chief Executive Officer of the University Hospital of the West Indies during a year 2007 when the hospital was in acute crisis. In recognition of all the outstanding service to the University of the West Indies, Professor McDonald was awarded the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence in 2008. His pioneering leadership as Dean subsequently led him to being appointed the Deputy Principal of the University of the West Indies Mona Campus in 2012. As Deputy Principal, he spearheaded several programs that sought to utilize the universal benefits of technological innovation in academia. Professor McDonald implemented the UE Total Electronic Solutions Tablet Project, which provided students with an opportunity to access their texts and other reading material in an electronic format via tablets. 
In September 2013, Professor MacDonald was appointed principal of the University of the West Indies Mona campus, where he has continued to make groundbreaking leadership decisions in order to enhance and improve Jamaica's educational system. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming to the podium our principal, Professor Archibald MacDonald. Thank you, um, Registrar, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, Vice Chancellor, Professor Ishen Kumbakawa, our Deputy Principal, Mr. Clement Aiton, University Registrar, Dr. Camille Bell Hutchinson, Campus Registrar, members of the Diplomatic Corps. Other, mem other distinguished members of the university's administration, um, Minister Fable Williams, I am not seeing her, but if she's there, welcome. Uh, matriculants, other students, including those from the Western Jamaica campus, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As principal of the University of the West Indies Mona campus, it is my distinct pleasure and indeed an honor to formally welcome you to the region's finest tertiary educational institution. Today, young Pelicans, you are being inducted into one of the most elite and influential communities throughout the Caribbean. This is a community that has been defined by exemplary intellect, driven by a mission to succeed, and one which has shaped the way our region has developed over the past several decades. Indeed, young Pelicans, you are now a member of a community of game changers and community builders. And as your principal, I stand here with distinct pride and honor to welcome you. Every year, we as the management team of the University of the West Indies gather to mark this occasion with all our newcomers as the day that you begin to sculpt a new identity and trajectory for your lives. It goes without saying that every year I stand here exceedingly pleased and encouraged to see the many young and ambitious faces looking back at me and the rest of our team. Your eyes full with ambition, hope, determination, and zeal to succeed. All of you sit with a sense of pride and accomplishment for various reasons. For some, you may be the first to attend university in your family. For others, you sit proudly knowing that you have proven many detractors wrong by being accepted into this fine institution. For all of you, today is one step towards self-actualization. That is one step closer towards fulfilling your dream of becoming the professional or academic you have always imagined yourselves to be. What I recognize in all of you as you sit here is that you all have the potential to succeed and to become new trailblazers for our society. <clears throat> Despite any limitations, you all now have the opportunity to surpass them, as today marks the beginning of a new and exciting stage in your life. You all sit today now on equal footing. Your previous schools, your socioeconomic standing, your past failures, 
no longer define who you are in this new stage of your life. So let me encourage you to seize this opportunity to shape the future you deserve. <clears throat> Here at the UWI, we value the multiple and varied intellectual contributions that I know you will make to the continued development of this institution and this country and the region. And as such, we are exceedingly pleased to welcome you into our family. As principal, it would be remiss if I, I would be remiss if I did not pass on some words of advice as you begin this new journey. <clears throat> as such, I find these words from one of the most notable female singers in the world, apropos, which is to always remember your best revenge is your paper. I know you know who said that. Your best revenge is your paper. You should know that better than I do. Those were words were said by Beyonce. Though there may be, <clears throat> though there may be many interpretations of this line, I believe that it was her way of saying that an education is one of the best gifts you could possibly give yourself and one which would prove to the many naysayers that you are capable of true greatness and will become a player in the, in the way our world thinks and how we interact with society. Your degree and the many benefits it will bring to your doorstep throughout your life is the best way to prove yourself and to the many detractors that you are indeed capable of greatness, of succeeding and of providing a worthwhile contribution to our society. I'll allow your attainment of this degree to be your personal revenge for ever doubting your knowledge, your capabilities and your vigor to remain in this very difficult race towards academic success. <clears throat> this degree, your paper, is your ticket to a new way of thinking and seeing the world. It is your ticket to experiencing new ways of thought, expression, culture, knowledge, and understanding. Thus, becoming one of the most important symbols of learning and growth you will ever attain. Do not betray yourself by squandering the opportunity to grow from this experience. And I urge you, do not let the opportunity pass to use the knowledge you have gained to make a better life for yourself, your family, and others. Use this degree to prove to yourself that regardless of the many times you may stumble during this period of your life and before, you are still capable of succeeding. Allow your quest for this degree to prove that regardless of any limitations placed on you by society, you are still able to achieve one of the highest forms of academic qualifications possible. And finally, allow it to motivate you to achieve even more once you have completed your studies. Pelicans, the degree you will achieve at the end of this sojourn is your ticket to accomplishing all your life goals and a critical first step to pioneering your own personal success. So revel in the moment. Do not waste it, as it is a cherished opportunity that many others still dream of experiencing. Always remember that. Do not waste this opportunity. Get the best degree that you can. Winston Churchill once said that success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. 
attaining a degree at the university will not be a walk in the park. You will be challenged, and at times you will be forced to question your innate knowledge and the manner in which you approach learning. It will be defined by some amount of failure. Some of you may, may, may move from straight A to a B or even a C. This may be viewed as failure in your eyes at first, but I believe and I urge you to take it, use it as an opportunity for you to work even harder. The key after every disappointing grade or essay feedback from your lecturer is to keep going, remain positive and determined to always remember that you are capable of doing better. The fact that you are sitting here today proves that you meet the bar in being accepted into one of the region's most elite academic communities, of being accepted into the number one ranking university in the Caribbean. Like many of our prime ministers, business leaders, artists, entrepreneurs, philanthropists, etc., you have met the requirements for becoming a pelican and thus inducted into a unique circle of leaders and forward thinkers. You therefore possess the potential for greatness. That is why I implore you to never give up after a failure, but rather move on with enthusiasm and determination. <coughs> Always keep a strong and positive group of friends, very important, around you, who will motivate you to work hard and do well. Be around people who encourage you to think outside the box and who can positively challenge you to widen your horizons in learning. Remember, Elena Roosevelt who said, great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. Here at the UWI, we, we foster an environment for great minds and individuals who are destined to become innovative thinkers and leaders. Please, again, I urge you, do not squander this opportunity with those who do not have the same goals for, your, for life as you do, as it would be a waste of a very valuable opportunity. Always use this opportunity to enhance your network. Speak with individuals from different social groups so that your understanding and experience of life can be widened and diversified. Interact with individuals who would force you to challenge or re-evaluate your own norms so that you can gain a clearer view of what the world is like as seen through the eyes of others. This is a rare opportunity to learn from people from, of diverse backgrounds. So please, again, use it wisely. Here on campus, you will meet people from all walks of life, from different nationalities and ethnicities, from different social backgrounds, people who embrace different religions or even no religion at all. You will meet people with disabilities, people with different sexual orientations. As an educational institution, we embrace diversity and inclusion. Make use of the opportunity to form networks. There is more to learn outside the classroom than inside. Life as a student will be filled with, with a wide array of experiences and emotions. Embrace the changes that will take place over the next three to four years in your lives and always try to transform the negatives into a positive learning experience. For the many who may feel as if they are unable to cope with the difficulties of tertiary studies, 
The University of the West Indies provides counseling services that can be ac accessed through our health center. We provide a thoughtful, calming, and caring listening environment in which our healthcare professionals are trained to help you get through moments of difficulty. We do not judge and will always provide a listening and confidential ear. The UWI is committed to providing the best education possible, but we are also committed to protecting the welfare of our students. We want you to graduate from this institution learned and with a better appreciation of the world. We hope that you become a graduate who is able and willing to challenge the norms of the world and who is suited to bring about positive change for all. The UWI is committed to producing game changers and pioneers. And I therefore implore you to study hard, remain positive, believe in yourself, and dedicate the next few years to becoming the next generation of degree holders for our society. You are the future of our country. You are the future of our region. So use this time wisely to enhance your intellect to becoming the pioneering professionals you are destined to be. As Steve Jobs noted, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. So I expect all you all to become leaders in your respective fields upon completion of your programs. The UWI will remain committed to your growth and development, but the onus again Cannot repeat it too many times. The onus is on you to work hard for it. Pelicans, I am proud to welcome you into our family, and I look forward to the many stories of your success over the next few years. Remember to always work hard, respect each other, listen with an inquisitive mind, and always give 110% to your coursework and exams. This will prove to be a significant period in your life. So embrace this opportunity and strive for success and greatness. We are all extremely proud to welcome you here today. And I look forward to seeing you on campus, walking with determination to each of your classes. Thank you for choosing the UWI and always keep the motto of this university in your hearts and minds as you study with us and beyond. Orient's ex Occidente Lux, a light rising from the West. Always keep in mind that whatever path you take, both professionally and personally, insist on becoming a light of fortune, achievement, and hope for your society and work towards greatness. Thank you and welcome to the University of the West Indies. Thank you very much, Principal. Before I invite the new students to stand and invite our guild president to lead you in the academic bow, I'd just like to recognize His Excellency Fitzgerald Jeffrey and Mrs. Jeffrey. His Excellency is the High Commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome. We also recognize our colleague from the Chinese Embassy representing the Chinese Ambassador. Welcome to you too, sir. Thank you for being here. At this time, I invite all new students to stand and will ask our Guild President to come and lead you in the academic vow. For those who aren't aware, it's on the back of the program. We 
build together, say, the academic bow. I solemnly promise that as a member of the University of the West Indies, I will strive to follow the ideals of academic life, to love learning, to advance true knowledge, to show respect to the staff of the university and my fellow students, to lead a seemly life and set a worthy example of good behavior wherever I may be. Thank you. Those words may seem very simple, but they are profound and important for every member of our university community. Earlier in the program, I indicated that I was gonna leave the welcoming of a particular group of persons for a later time. So here we are, about to introduce you to what your program calls the new student's representative, which in our lingua we say to our matriculant. I'm about to introduce you to our matriculant for the 2016-17 academic year. The matriculant is the student entering the university with the best qualifications. But before I introduce him, I would like to especially recognize the principal, teachers, and students of the Mannings High School. Could you stand for me, please? <laughs> principal of the Mannings High School is Mr. Steve Gordon. Why have I asked them to stand? This is the third consecutive year that our matriculant is from the Mannings High School. We therefore want to say hats off to the president, Mr. Steve Gordon, and to his teachers, and to encourage the other students. This seems to be a trend. Let us see what happens next year. I'll ask you to sit. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for the Mannings High School. And therefore, we didn't quite get the drums to roll, but it is my great pleasure to introduce to you and to announce our matriculant for the 2016-2017 academic year, Mr. Niall Emilio Anderson. And I'm gonna ask Niall to join me on the platform. Niall, I'll ask you to just stand there and turn and face. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Niall Emilio Anderson. As he joins me, I now want to give a very special welcome to his mom, Miss Megan Berry. Please stand. His brother, his brother, Mr. Rand, sorry, his uncle, Mr. Randall Berry, uncle. And his brother, Mr. Jordan Anderson. I know they are all extremely proud of Niall this afternoon. Niall, as we just told you, is a very, very present past student. Can I tell you that? He's one of the Mannings family while he's a past student of the Mannings High School and now a student of medicine in the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of the West Indies. Niall indicates that he comes from a humble beginning and he was raised by a single mother who herself <laughs> who herself was from a poverty-stricken background but was on a successful academic journey even when Niall was born. Early in his life, Niall was diagnosed with a rare skeletal abnormality called Sprengel deformity, causing one of his shoulder blades to sit higher on his back than the other. Niall was always faced with ridicule by both adults and children alike because of this abnormality. In his early academic years, he therefore struggled. He was a struggling student, to use his own words way behind in his class and placed in the lowest stream on entering primary school. In Niall's own words, he says, 
Over time, with the help of devoted teachers and constant encouragement, my performance improved greatly, and I reached the first stream of my grade and eventually graduated from primary school at the top of my class. <laughs> On entering Manning's High School, it was not a much easier experience at first. He was not settled, and his performance began to decline again. However, with the help of teachers at the Manning's High School, the encouragement of his mom, and after having interacted with several good-oriented individuals, he says, at my school, my outlook on my life changed, and I was now determined to do well at all costs. In second form, he sat and was successful in two CSEC subjects, attaining grades one and two. In third form, in third form, he sat two more subjects, again attaining grades one and two. And eventually, in fifth form, he sat 16 subjects. And in those 16 subjects, he attained grade one for 13 of those. and grade two for the remaining three. But, but, Nile was not about to stop. He pursued six form studies and sat a total of nine unit ones and six unit twos, 15 subjects at K. He, he obtained grade one in 12 of these CAPE subjects. And he obtained grade two in the remaining three. And just to give you a synopsis, only because of time I won't read out the 16, but in biology unit one and biology unit two, grade one, chemistry unit one and chemistry unit two, grade one, pure maths unit one and pure mathematics unit two, grade one, physics. Physics, and Physics Unit 1, and Physics Unit 2, Grade 1. Our matriculant this evening says that his tenure at Manning's High School did not only prepare him solely for the academics. He says Manning's prepared him to live a holistic life. As such, he was involved in several extracurricular activities, representing his school in public speaking events, the school's challenge quiz, the math Olympiad, the science competitions, the Spanish festival, and chess. And, and in addition to this, he had several leadership positions in these clubs at Manning's. He has left as deputy head boy of Manning's. He was, he was president of the chess club, and he was the house captain in his house. Outside of school, Nile was also very active, and I shouldn't say was, is very active at his church, and does voluntary work at the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, Niall Anderson believes that it is his duty to do well and to keep reminding people that their current situation 
does not determine their destination. <laughs> Nile says that success is an attainable destination for all and that he will not stop until he reaches that destination. In recognition of his outstanding performance, not only is he our matriculant, but Nile will be receiving through the Board for Undergraduate Studies an UE Open Scholarship which covers his full tuition and boarding. This will cover his full tuition and boarding with an additional 2,500 US dollars for meals and books. As he enters, as he enters the MBBS program here in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, we are ever so sure that he will do well and that in five years time, we will be graduating an outstanding medical doctor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our matriculant for 2016-17, Mr. Nile Emilio Anderson. Thank you. Thank you. And now, one of the tasks that our matriculant does is to have a symbolic signing of the register on behalf of all the new students. I'm therefore going to invite Niall to walk with me to the table to the right. And what he will be doing is signing on behalf of all of you here and those who have not been able to make it. We see the proud mummy. It is indeed a proud moment for all of us, but I can't just manage. Mummy, you are so proud this evening. Well done, Niall. At this time, we will have the formal recognitions. We're going to have some remarks from our Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles. The new students will sit for the Vice Chancellor's remarks, and when he's about to recognize you, he will indicate that you will stand for the recognition and thereafter resume your seats. So join me now in welcoming our Vice Chancellor, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles. Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, our representatives of government, our distinguished principal, deputy principal, our university registrar and campus principal, my colleague deans, students, matriculants, our super matriculant, And allow me to say, as, as chairman of CXC, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> and as your vice chancellor, to welcome you. And to acknowledge that it takes a super mum to produce a super matriculated school. I join with 
our distinguished principal and welcome, welcome in each and every one of you to our university. The principal has been a good friend for many, many years. But I did not know until tonight that he is a connoisseur of popular contemporary music. <laughs> and when I heard him quote Beyonce, I was very mindful to quote Rihanna, <laughs> a young lady who I know and I have watched grown up, brilliant in high school, excellent student, but I could not find an appropriate quote for this moment. <laughs> and I did not wish to misquote and to be misrepresented. But allow me to say what a pleasure it is to welcome you to the UWI family, a community of some of near 50,000 students scattered across our four campuses. A university that has produced over 150,000 graduates. Graduates who have gone on to distinguish themselves in all endeavors of civilization and have made this region and this university very proud. Our task has been to create an environment to allow you to excel even further than you have done before you have joined us. This campus is our ancestral home. This is where we started 68 years ago and we'll be celebrating our 70th anniversary in just two years from now. You, the cohort of 16 going forward, will therefore be part of our 70th anniversary and as you all know from biblical mathematics, three scores and 10 is the moment of arrival. But you are also a minority within a minority. So few of our young Caribbean citizens have taken this journey into higher education. It is indeed disturbing to all of us that within this hemisphere, within this hemisphere, from Alaska to Argentina, that we in the English-speaking Caribbean, we have the lowest enrollment in higher education throughout this land. We are at the bottom of the hemisphere in respect to the percentage of our youth who are entering into higher and tertiary education. You are therefore a very privileged and special minority. We would love to see your numbers expanded. But we know that you have a critical role to play in the future in encouraging your younger brothers and sisters, including your older brothers and sisters, including those who are behind you and the schools you have come to us from, that you must also encourage them to follow you here and to come hither. This is a major challenge for us in the Caribbean. Our university is dedicated to the purpose of the upliftment and development of our people and to secure their future going forward. This is a task that is even more onerous as we look into this very turbulent global era. But we also know that the potential of a country for development and the opportunities for development in a country are a reflection of the number of its citizens who have had or who have entered into higher education with the benefits of professional training. We have every reason, therefore, to be concerned. It is incumbent upon you, therefore, to join with us in calling upon all of our governments, our civil societies, 
to participate in sponsoring a higher education revolution. It is only such a revolution in higher education that will secure our future. In this great land, great country of Jamaica, I have no doubt that one of the major inhibiting factors to the prosperity of this country is the absolute chronic shortage of citizens who have had higher education and professional training. It is therefore a major task for us to find a way to secure this revolution of which I speak. You as students have a role to play. I would urge each and every one of you to be activists, to identify all of the challenges facing your country and region, and to speak about them, discuss them, debate them, agitate around them. We do not wish to produce citizens who are passive passengers on the bus going forward. Be concerned, be engaged, take personal responsibility for all the challenges around you. And ask yourself, what role do I have to play as the custodian and beneficiary of this fine university? What role do I have to play in solving these problems? I urge you to do this because there is a view which has been articulated by sociologists, by political scientists, who have said that Caribbean society has run out of energy, that we have struggled against slavery and indenture, we have struggled against colonization, we have struggled for social justice and racial equality, and now we are tired and exhausted. And you, the young people, are showing no evidence of possessing the energy for the future. We know that this is not true. And we would wish you to demonstrate to the pessimists around us that this is not true, that you are possessed of energy, commitment, and you will shape this Caribbean world in your finest image with your greatest imagination. You will demonstrate to them that you are not disillusioned in the future of your societies, that you are positive when you imagine the future of your societies, and that you will take responsibility for them. Our role as university administrators is equally daunting. We have to demonstrate to you, to our governments, to our civil societies, that this university is in need of a new mandate and a new legitimacy. We ask ourselves as academic leaders, what are the main challenges facing our region that we must in turn address? There is no doubt in my mind that the biggest challenge facing this university is to participate directly in the process of generating economic growth and social stability in our societies. That this economic recession is challenging all of the things that we have achieved. All of the benefits that we have been able to achieve for social distribution are now challenged. Our university must prove beyond a doubt that it is committed to the process of finding economic growth, of creating material development, of supporting the creation of wealth, and enabling our economies to grow. In this process, we believe that students, in your own way, must become as entrepreneurial as you can imagine. That while you are here, you must 
conceptualize strategies for your self-employment, for the creation of your own enterprises, and to see yourselves not only as employees, but as employers of the future. This is very important at this moment in time. We will do our best. For example, we are about to roll out a new degree program in software engineering. And we are doing this with a university in China that specializes in software engineering. And this program built around mobile technology and the application of mobile technologies is designed to produce self-employed graduates. Because as you are before you graduate in China, you will spend the first two years at UWI, and you will spend the second two years in China. And while in China, you will be located in the technology park of Suzhou, which is the Chinese equivalent of Silicon Valley. So you will be inducted into the technology park to learn mobile technology for application. This program is not closed. Some of you who might wish to look at this program and the Faculty of Sciences might wish to do so even now. But the purpose of this program is to make sure that we produce a generation of students who on graduation have already been trained in the art and science of establishing your own company, your own enterprise, and to, and to employ your contemporaries. We will take these steps to lead the way with you in establishing a new legitimacy for your university. This is one university, four campuses, one university. We are also doing our best to ensure that each and every one of you has an opportunity to experience the other campuses of the university. Our ideal is that all of you must travel to another campus before you graduate from Mona. That you must engage your colleagues in the open campus, St. Augustine, Carefield, meet with them, engage with them. You must know that you have graduated from the University of the West Indies, which is a regional university. Our next faculty engagement is going to be very uplifting. We have not created a new faculty in 40 years. Our last faculty was the Faculty of Law that was established over 40 years ago. But our next faculty that will be established within the time of your engagement here will be the, UW, the UWI Faculty of Sport. And our Minister of Finance has just arrived to hear me speak of the Faculty of Sport that will be established within the next year or so, based to some extent with the support, the financial support of the Government of Jamaica. Because the Honorable Usain Bolt has said to me, Vice Chancellor, can you imagine can you imagine a future, let us say the year 2030, imagine if you will the year 2030 and Jamaica cannot win a goal in track. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Okay. 20 years ago, I could not imagine that the West Indies cricket team would be at the bottom of the world championships. <laughs> because we had ruled world cricket for 20 years 
and we thought it would go on forever. Jamaica is now the track speed capital of the world. How are we, as the University of the West Indies, going to ensure that what has happened to West Indies cricket must not, will not, and can never happen to track in Jamaica? All of us, all of us have a responsibility to ensure that when our people have achieved excellence, that excellence is never, ever lost. This is the responsibility of universities, of students, of governments to ensure that our legacies are never dashed by the wayside. And so all of us have an enormous amount of work to do. My colleagues and I, we are fully aware of all of this. And we urge you also, as our students, to be aware of the role that you have to play as well in this difficult moment. Because we are all in this together, vice chancellor, students, deans, professors, all of us now have a special remit to maintain the excellence achieved by our people. And in this spirit then, I welcome you, I welcome you and blessings. As the Vice Chancellor and Officer of the University, <laughs> vested under Statute 5 with the authority to exercise general and specific supervision over the educational arrangements of the University, including authority for the admission of students. I am pleased to recognize all students admitted at the Mona campus to read for undergraduate degrees as duly matric matriculated. And all those admitted to read for undergraduate diplomas and certificates as having satisfied the relevant statutory requirements. I welcome all of you into the academic community of the University of the West Indies and wish for all of you every success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor. I now call upon Ms. Cecile Clayton, the president of our UWIAA Alumni Association Jamaica chapter to bring you remarks. And I'm gonna ask the students who are going to be lighting the candles to get ready. Hello, everyone. At this stage in our ceremony, a very warm afternoon, I know you don't want to hear salutations. I think by now you know all the important people here. Uh, so I'm going to focus my remarks on giving you some little secrets. Now, you, I hope you have listened very carefully to the principal and to the vice chancellor, to the excellent advice you are given. But as an alumnus myself, I'm an alumnus of this institution many, many moons ago, if you really want to know my age, I'm as old as the university. I will give you a little hint. You can either go through your three years like a nerd, just beating books, running down the grades, arguing about grades, and going home, or you can take full advantage of all the wonderful opportunities that we have prepared for you, and that you can leave here at the end of your three or four or five years saying, wow, this was the most amazing period of my life, because that's what I can say. The best three years of my life to date were the three years spent on this campus of the University of the West Indies. So I implore you, don't be a nerd, don't be a bookworm. Work hard, yes, but you have heard from the example of Mr. Niall Amelia Anderson, who has achieved so much on the great hardship and still found time 
to do extracurricular activities and to excel in co-curricular activities. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that is the way to really succeed. You have to learn time management and enjoy everything that the university has to offer. So uh, I would urge you once again, there are so many opportunities. If you're a sports-minded person, you can get into sports, you can play panorhythm, you can, you can uh, audition for the university singers, you can join UISTAT, UWI, Students Today, Alumni Tomorrow, which will prepare you for your time as alumni afterwards. You can uh, take advantage of the mentorship program. There is a first year uh, experience program. There are so many things that you can get involved in and I urge you to take full advantage. If you need information on this, just check the Office of Student uh, Services and Development and they will help you along. And uh, we actually have a spot on campus, Alumni House, 28 West Road, which is just behind Faculty of Law and beside the new Medical Science Building. Feel free to come in, that the UBSTAT ambassadors also share that space. And what I'm urging you to do is to think of yourself from the very first time that you enter this institution. You think, you project as to what you'll be afterwards. And so we await, we await the chance to welcome you three years hence into the Alumni Association. Enjoy your time. It's going to be the best time of your, of your entire life if you make good use of it. Welcome. Thank you, Ms. Clayton. At this time, I just want to recognize the Honorable Favo Williams. We did recognize her earlier, but she just came, Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Thanks for still joining us this afternoon. Thank you very much. At this time, I'm going to invite our students to come forward. We're going to have the lighting of 17 candles. The 17 candles were lit by our students representing the contributing territories or the contributing countries to the University of the West Indies. May I invite the students to come forward for the lighting of the candles? While they come forward, the university singers will be getting ready. For those of you who are new, you may not realize, the, the, the Vice Chancellor has reminded you that we are a regional university and we are supported by 17 countries. Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda. And young people, you may, you may begin lighting. I hope you, you all have your, we won't find out where you got those cigarette lighters from, but <laughs> you may begin lighting. There you go. Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda. Barbados, Belize, Bermuda, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Kitts Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. These are the contributing countries to the University of the West Indies. These are the countries that help us to make it happen for you. Are they lit? Let's give our candlelighters a round of applause. And as the university singers enter, we'll ask the, our candlelighters to take their seats. Thank you very much. We're now going to be given a short performance by our university singers, the most outstanding singers in this side of the world. Let's hear it for the university singers. Those dreams. 
I'm reminding you that the, for those of you, I shouldn't say reminding you, don't know, auditions for the University Singers, for those of us who would be, those of you who would be interesting, we have the University Singers and the University Chorale, and they will be on Thursdays in September, subsequent Thursdays in September, at the Philip Sherlock Center at 2 p.m. So next week, Thursday, we begin, and it will be in the Philip Sherlock Center. Those who don't know where that is yet, don't worry, you will soon find out at 2 p.m. Also, just one little bit of news that I picked up, that our matriculant's mom, Miss Megan Berry, she's actually one of us. You were at the UDEC Savlamar site for many years. So you need a little extra round of applause. You're one of us, and we are so proud. We're even more proud of you. Once the university singers um, perform now, we will go straight into the singing of the university singers. So you just had my closing remarks to thank you for being here. We want to hear the university singers and then you will stand with us as we close with our university song. University singers, are you ready? Are we to say, Mr. Music Man, will you play? Good. Sometimes 
May I ask you to remain standing as the Vice Chancellor and the rest of the platform academic staff and the Guild Council leave. Thank you for remaining standing. Thank you for being here. See you soon. Have a good evening.